Hello, class. Good morning once again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There was a challenge with the network. It went off and then we, we should just connected it back. So Very sorry bad. for the delay. Uh, we can do something today. We can do something. Um, I was about to tell you the reason why we did not have lectures last week. Uh, Am Roberts entered my house and took away my phones, my laptops when we were all asleep. I don't know whether they put something for us to sleep so they can do whatever they want to do. So oh, we, sorry, sir. Uh, oh, I sorry, and my sir. family, we, we were in very... Sorry, sir. Oh, sir, sorry, sorry. Yes. sorry. But God's, oh. God's protection God was say, sorry. amount and we were able to have our life intact. There was no yeah, we problem. We prayer, no, sir. Sorry. Just took the items. Yes, but uh, we are we are we are in good say uh, in good hands. Everybody is safe. That's the most important thing. So thank you for your prayers. Those who were in the known, I gave the message to the reps. The reason why we do not have lectures, I have not experienced this before. Uh, expecting that my laptop is going to be ready, lectures. I mean, the slides are ready. Then all of a sudden, this happened. So uh, sorry for the inconvenience caused last week. Notwithstanding this week, we are going to do something small. And then tomorrow from four to six, you have your medicine. And I think if you read the hand or the material, the guidelines or the study guide, you'll be able to navigate your way through the questions and you can have a very good mark for yourself uh, and also for the end of semester. So uh, make you good use of the materials given to you. Uh, especially the, the the guide, yes. So we want to look at homeopathy and uh, some uh, the, the 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 therapies are many. Like uh, I I will send you a lot of them, but we can't go through all of them. So there will be selected ones that we can handle. So I will I will I will send them to you so that you can read through. So quickly, let us go through homeopathy. So we are saying that. Uh, homeopathy is a system of complementary medicine, so it is part of the calm, the calm therapy. Homeopathy is part of it. So when you are walking around, you will see homeopathy signboard, homeopathy clinic, homeopathy clinic. And I learned some of them even do adverts on the radio stations, UTV and other parts. They also form part of the alternative medicine. They complement the existing health structures. They are part of the health systems, but their mode of treatment is different from the orthodox uh, treatment. They don't use the chemical paracetamol, the chemical cefirozine, the chemical azithromycin, the chemical ciprofloxacin. No, they don't go that direction. However, they use natural substances, natural substances, and they tow in the direction of vaccine vaccine so you could hear that or you could see the definition is it's a system of complementary medicine in which diseases or ailment is treated with minute dose of natural substances that in a larger amount will produce symptoms of the ailment or the disease so this is a definition of a vaccine a simple vaccine we don't need too much of a vaccine we need just a simple vaccine which is made up from natural substances, either the serum of a snake or the serum of a personal substances or the serum of the organism that will cause the disease. Then we put in a small amount in an attenuated form to weaken it and therefore to let the body st be stimulated so it can produce the specific antibodies to fight subsequent diseases. This is the line of homeopathy homeopathy so they use the natural substances in a smaller amount inject it into the person then the body will respond by producing specific antibodies which will protect the body against that particular disease so that is vaccination let us look at the types of homeopathy the types of homeopathy so we have one major type called autoisopathy. This is the treatment with remedies made from patient-owned body substance. So they can take, last week I sent you a slide on urine therapy. 
some people they use their own urine to treat themselves so it is a part of homeopathy called autoisopathy they use your own body substances to treat certain conditions then we have classical homeopathy it is a doctrine based on strict Hellman's principles classical homeopathy it is based on strict Hellman principles and it involves a detailed examination of a patient history so they listen to your history in a very detailed manner then they do detailed examination then they give you a simple dose of a medication that they monitor the improvement of your symptoms they don't dose you take one morning one evening for one week for five no just a simple dose infrequent means it is not repeated more often they just give you a single dose then they monitor you for improvement of symptoms that is called strict Hainman's principle and that is based on that principle called classical homeopathy then we have clinical homeopathy So clinical homeopathy, this is the non-individualized treatment. So this treatment is non-individualized. Uh, it doesn't depend on one person. It is based mainly on guiding a symptom. Example, anika for bruise. So uh, anika, I hope you know anika for bruise. It is a specific substance that is like a, a cream or an ointment or a element Yes. Or uh, I should put it as a, something like a cream. And it's basically used for inflammatory proce uh, inflammation processes. So when there's an inflammation, they apply it over the skin. And when it's applied over the skin, it, it, it reduces the inflammation and reduces the bruises. There is a pain going through the course of the inflammation. <laughs> I can't mute those who are talking, so please tell them to mute themselves. The way I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I, I can't mute them, so please tell them to mute themselves. The way it is, it is. I think it is the only the host who can mute. Ah, uh, so please let us observe some silence because. The way the thing was sent to me here, I can't mute every. So please, just let's exercise some silence. Thank you. So we are talking about um, clinical homeopathy, and they use a substance called anika. Anika is 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 a cream. It's a natural cream made of. Uh, substances that heal inflammatory process applied over the skin to reduce inflammatory process. So when there is bruises over the skin, when there's pain, when there's inflammation like arthritis, like trauma to the skin, the anika is applied and it reduces the bruises, it reduces the inflammation and the pain goes away. So that process is a typical clinical homeopathy. It is not in the, everybody can use it. So it does not tailor specifically to an individual. So everybody can use it. That is uh, clinical homeopathy. Then we have the pluralistic homeopathy. Pluralistic homeopathy. This is the use of more than one remedy at once. So here, just like what the helper people come on the radio, this one of my medication can heal headache, can heal stomach, can heal ulcer, can heal pulse, can heal hypertension, diabetes. So it is it is a, a pluralistic homeopathy. It is the homeopathic people who can manufacture a product that can do that. So when they come, understand it from the point of view. If you look at the scientific point of view, it looks nonsense. But from their end of or point of view, it makes sense to to them. So that is a typical form of pluralistic homeopathy. So let us look at the clinical application of homeopathy. 
immunotherapy can be used in the treatment of mastitis. So when there is mastitis, we use uh, homeopathy to heal the inflammatory process of the breast. Treatment of allergies. Some people have allergies, especially during the changes in weather. This particular weather from rainy season to the dry season, there's a transition. And there are a lot of allergies. If you go to the hospitals, you have an asthmatic attacks. You, during the rainy season, there's also asthmatic attack because the humidity is high. During the dry season, there's also asthma because there's dust. People react to the dust so much. So you, anytime the season changes, then people react specifically to the allergies around. Uh, uh, we did a study uh, when I was at Tech Hospital. That was uh, the time I was at Tech. People, I observed most of the senior high students from St. Louis Senior High School were coming with asthma, asthma, asthma. Then I, I sat down and I said, why are these students coming out with so much asthmatic attacks? Then let me do some simple study. So I went to the school, I communicated to the school nurse, and I went there to observe the environment to see if there is the, the uh, or anything in the environment that is triggering the onset of these asthmatic attacks for these students. So I went there and I spoke to the, 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 the school nurse. And the nurse told me that, yes, during the rainy season, she has been there for quite a long time and she has been observing too. So she told me that during the rainy season, the trees, they do flowering, they, they, they produce the, the pollens, and most of these pollens contain allergies. And that is how the students react so much to these allergies. And I said, oh, okay, so that is an environmental allergies from the pollen grains from the plants that are found around the environment. So I, 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 I did a recommendation that I should have done further proof to see whether specifically they are reacting to the allergen. But uh, I think fans were not available for us to go to the lab to take samples and, and check whether truly these students are reacting to the pollen grains from the plant. So uh, after this message, I communicated to the students to put on masks so it can reduce the exposure to these environmental allergens. So uh, homeopathy can be used to treat these allergies. Pain relief. If you have specific pain, homeopathy can be used to reduce the pain. Treatment of acne, acne bogaris. Uh, you people call it pimples, right? It aim at eliminating the symptoms rather than uh, taking away the condition completely. So it can reduce the symptoms of acne bogaris. And I think it can suppress it so much. Treatment of depression. Those who are depressed on the basis of specific uh, anxiety, failure of life ambition, loss of dear ones, loss of valuable items. So if you are in a depressed state, you could have uh, treatment from homeopathy and it works so fast. Signs and symptoms of the patient depression will be minimized when you are given treatment from homeopathic area. It is very important to study the mental and the physical condition of the patient before deciding a particular homeopathic remedy. So if you, are, if you want to decide the way of homeopathy for depression, then you have to observe the physical and then the mental state of the patient and observe the signs and symptoms very well before you decide a particular homeopathy for this particular patient. So you don't just nice and symptoms mental state physical conditions everything before you decide then one of the best way you can help the patient out is in the treatment of infertility people who are experiencing infertility from other sources especially hormonal based are best treated with homeopathy Doctors help treating the patient's disorder with the help of minerals and herbs obtained from nature. So they use natural herbs. They use natural minerals from animals, from plants, and they use them to treat these conditions of infertility. This treatment helps by removing any emotional or physical blocks to infertility. So what they do is when they give you their preparations, if it is emotional trauma that is causing imbalance of the hormones, I hope from simple obstetrics, 
you should know how the mind influences ovulation. You know that the mental ability, emotional state, definitely will affect the hormones, especially the follicle stimulating hormones. So I'm taking it from the infertility point of view. I was saying that we can use homeopathy to treat infertility. And I was coming from the point that if the infertility is from hormonal imbalance, most of the people experience infertility from hormonal imbalance. It could be a woman, it could be a man. Traditionally, we thought infertility is only a thing of the women. But now we know that men can also have low sperm count as well. And therefore, this can also have a tool on the men. So we look at if the infertility is from the hormonal point of view, then how do we help balance the hormones by making sure that we make you emotionally stable? And I was trying to relate the mind to ovulation. During ovulation, before before ovulation, uh, you know, the mind plays a major role. The mind has to uh, release certain hormones. Uh, talk, talking about the follicle stimulating hormone, uh, that initiate the growth of the gravium follicles and therefore this grow gradually until it reaches a certain maturity sustained by estrogen, uh, nourished by this estrogen in the ovaries or is from the mind. So if the mind is emotionally imbalanced, emotionally upset, this hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, will not be able to stimulate the gravium follicles for them to grow. So it will be taken over by the luteinizing hormone for, uh, for ovulation to occur. With that ovulation, you can never uh, uh, experience uh, uh, fertilization. So everything is basically hormonal balance. If the mind is not stable, if the mind is upset, this hormone may not be able to release and therefore ovulation may be halted. So this is a best or medication best used in homeopathic areas they will emotionally balance you they will stimulate the production of these hormones and you can have good ovulation if you have two bar blockages what is basically physical then they can give you medication to the barriers so the tubes or the fallopian tubes could become patent so you can have very good fertilization so they are very well endowed in the areas of infertility when they use their product to treat you, you can have good prognosis, good results. Okay. The treatment helps the body to get proper control by its hormones, regulate menstrual cycle, improve ovulation in women and overall sperm count in men. Some men having low sperm count can also be improved so well with these remedies. So also in cold, those allergies, I mentioned the cold allergies, acne, I mentioned acne. Treatment for shingles, you know, shingles, yes. Uh, herpes zoster virus type 2, that is the shingles. And we have the type 1 and then the type 2. All are viral infections and homeopathy is best used to treat these. Eczema in children, eczema, eczema in tree. How will you call eczema in tree? It's like a crow, right? A crow, a crow. Mm -hmm. So... This skin condition, the uh, homeopathy is best in treating people. Please mute your microphones. I can't mute you from this point. I don't know why today I can't mute you, but I can't mute you. You have to mute yourself. If you know your microphone is unmuted, please mute it so you don't disturb the class. Please, 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 please. Otherwise, I will start mentioning names. Joyce yeah. Clarantin, your microphone is on. Joyce, Joyce Clarantin, please mute your microphone. Thank you. So let us look at nursing considerations during homeopathic treatment. So we said nurses should explain to patients that these medicines do not suppress the pain. Rather, it strengthens the immune system and treats the cause of the disease. That is basically the, the, the scientific base of homeopathy. It strengthens... Oh, who are those disturbing? Please. Madam Joyce. Ah, 
Please, please, please. Ma. Who knows Joyce is quarantine? Joyce is quarantine. I may take you off. Ma. The way you are disturbing everybody. Yeah, so just remove it. That's what she's disturbing. I don't know why today she had decided to disturb everybody. And she's not even with the phone for her to listen to what is happening. She has left the phone somewhere and the children are disturbing so much. Why? She was crying. Why? Ah. Anyway. So that is the basis for homeopathy. You use the medication to strengthen the immune system and the immune system will fight the disease that is basically how we fight viral infections we the viral infections are best treated with the immune system fighting the virus okay nurses must let patients know that homeopathy medicine is relatively safe for children adults even pregnant women because these medicines do not have any side effects because they use the natural herbs, the side effects are very, very minimal. And therefore, pregnant women can use it. Uh, adults, children, all streams of patients can use it because it's a very natural product. And once it's natural, the chemical components are very, very low and therefore no side effect. To allay fear, nurses must educate patients on the natural ingredients used in preparing uh, using the preparations such as plants and animals. So it is your duty as a nurse to educate the patients that people who are going to use homeopathy medications should be should be should be uh, should should not be fearful because it is basically plants and animals, natural plants, natural animals, minerals, and uh, other animal proteins they use to treat diseases. Nurses should explain to patients that these medic medicines do not suppress the pain. Rather, it strengthens the immune system to fight the diseases. Okay. The medicine generally comes in the form of tiny pills. So if you go to the homeopathic clinic, the pills are very, very tiny. And they are easy to take as prescribed by the doctor. It is the responsibility of the nurse to explain to the patient how and when you take the drug. So your duty as a nurse in during drug medication, you check the right, you check the patient consent, whether she will take or not then follow the routine uh, procedure for administering medications. And the medications are very, 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 very small. They are tiny and therefore easy to take without any problems. So let us look at limitations of homeopathy, where they are very, very limited. In medical emergencies, homeopathy alone do not provide the, the immediate care for patients. So during emergencies, it is not that time that you are going to say that, oh, let me take this for the immune system to build. It takes time for the immune system to build. So in emergency cases, you cannot... ...cases, especially during accidents, during traumatic experiences, you can't go there because it takes time to get the results. It becomes ineffective when it comes to diseases that require surgical procedure. Of course, surgically, for example, removal of myomes, which requires surgical intervention. Then you see some people saying, as for my help, it can bring the, 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 the fibroid out and then you go to the toilet and the fibroid... It can't. Surgical procedures require surg surgical interventions. And conditions that are chronic is best treated with homeopathy, but not an emergency cases or surgical cases. Take it clear. There are few genuine homeopathic medicines being prescribed and also the public also have less interest in using them. The public, why is the public having less interest in using them? Why? Is it because they are not advertising? Is it because of the, 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 the non-emergency nature of the condition and therefore people thought that as for this, it takes time for you to get results? Why is people not having interest in them? Think about it. Okay, 
So um, we can look at another condition or another Look at acupuncture. Inadequate advertisement from uh, Abdul Wahab. Okay, then Matthew is also saying, Matthew, raise up the hand. Matthew, let's, let's listen to you. Have something to say. Uh, Matthew. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, please, I want to know what, what is the homeopathic medicine and food supplement the same thing? And if they are not the same, what is the thin line, the thin line between them? Is your question? I don't know. Your voice were very, very faint. I yeah. don't know if, if it's asking, coming from my side I here. I don't know. I want to know. Okay. Uh, what is the uh, is homeopathy uh, uh, medicine and then food supplement? Are they the same? And if they are not the same, what is the thin line between them? You say uh, homeopathic clinic and Medicine and then a food supplement. Food supplement. Yes, please. Are they the same? And if they are not the no, same, no, 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 no. They, they are not the same. same. They are not the same. For example, we have we have a, a pharmaceutical industry that does advert on the media stations, especially the 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 multimedia that is Adam TV and the joy news you hear phytotech limited phytotech limited that is that is the, our 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 pharmaceutical industry it is products are basically especially the one for prostate 60 that is the brand name for the prostate medication we have the prostate. oh we have the prostate 60 and this prostate 60 is basically natural product there's no chemical in there okay. so it is natural product when we went to the FDA, yeah, yeah, we said it's food supplement. Food supplement that treats the prostate yeah, 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 yeah. and shrinks it. Yeah. That is it. So you can have medications and you 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 introduce or you write on it full supplement but can do so many things but the homeopathic their medicines are special medicines they 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 can make it full supplement or not if it is full supplement it cannot be applied topically with full supplement supposed to be taken inside but the homeopathic people have medicine that are typically applied and those that taken in it depends upon how you brand the product. Uh, sir, can you also like you to have a medicine? Okay, so um, please, I don't know. You know those of your colleagues who leave their microphones and disturb the lectures. Please advise them. I don't know the system today. I can't control anything here i can't mute people so please tell them to mute their microphones so therapeutic touch uh is so i was explaining uh matthew's question and uh, i would wish we postpone the question so after the lectures we can answer them otherwise i may not finish what i'm trying to teach because of the connectivity problems uh if you want sometimes you go to you want to have a link where you want to go through the approval of from FDA smoothly, then you brand your product as food supplement. If you make it food supplement, that is fine. They will just approve it for you. Meanwhile, the product in there controls and treats a lot of conditions. But if you say that my product A can treat or can kiosk or contain a, a substance that can cure prostate enlargement or can heal cancer, then they will subject you to strict scrutiny. And over five years, your product will not be approved. So what some of the people do is that if they want to go through the process of scrutiny from FDA, they say it's full supplement. Meanwhile, it contains some ingredients and some substances that can do so many magics. But because of smooth FDA approval, they'll say full supplement. 
but okay so uh sorry for the network i don't know today what's happening so therapeutic touch is a natural potential that consists of placing the practitioner's hands either on or close to the body of a person so they have a special powers within their hands and when they bring their hands close to you there is a drastic remedy that transcends some kind of power through you and then it heals you the process of therapeutic touch involves the practitioner scanning the body of the client and diagnosing areas of accumulated tensions. So when you have headache, then they bring, they scan, they use their hand to scan throughout from head to toe because they have specific or they have some, some energies within their hands. Wherever there's a tension, wherever there's pain, so the tension is related to pain. If there's a pain there, they'll be able to locate the pain and then they move their hands along that and then they heal that particular part of the body. So they scan like they are scanning a machine. So they use their hand to scan head to toe and detect where the problem is existing. That is what they call attentions. In therapeutic touch, the practitioner directs the practitioner's own interpersonal energy to help or heal the person or another person. So the power is within the hands of the practitioner. And he directs that power and transmits that energies from his hands or from him into the person. That energy goes through that person and the person is healed. That is how it is. So the energies are coming through the hands. That is what they call therapeutic touch. When they touch you, they don't really touch you, but they bring their hands close to you and move it along your body. And therefore, the energies from their hands move into the person to heal the person. So phases of therapeutic touch, we have phases, five phases here. Centering, here that is where the practitioner decides that he will become aware and fully present during the entire treatment. So the presence of the practitioner himself, who holds the energy in his hands, is called the centering. So he has come to center himself, accumulate himself with the energy, and is about to transmit the energy into you. So it is the process whereby the practitioner becomes aware and fully present during the entire treatment. Once he enters the treatment room and he prepares his mind to take you through the process, it's called centering. Then assessment. Here the practitioner moves his hands or her hands, so it could be his or her, roughly two to six inches from the body in rhythmic and symmetrical movement from head to toe. So he moves the hands. They know there's a form of learning. They learn it. They move their hands from the head to toe, rhythmically and symmetrically. As they move their hands, they are detecting the areas of the body where there are tensions and pain. Then they can concentrate the energies there and heal that part. During this phase, the practitioner may notice the quality of energy flow and detect accumulations of energy. So that is what has really been said and explained. Unraffling. Here, the practitioner facilitates the symmetrical and rhythmical flow of energy through the body. So, rhythmically, when they detect that there's pain, then the hands rhythmically move and symmetrically move. So, depending upon how they move the hand, that is how the energy is transmitted into the person. Then, treatment. The practitioner directs and modulates the energy, attempting to rebalance the energy flow. So, where they detect that hmm, the particular area that is full of tension, then... He redirects the hands and then he rhythmically and symmetrically moves the hands and uh, moves some kind of energy out of the hands. And then the energy moves from the hands and enter into the person at that particular part of the body. So the pain starts moving away. So if the pain is not over, the hands will still be around until they are sure that. And when the pain goes away, they can feel it in their hands that now the tensions are balanced here. Then they move on. Evaluation. Then after everything, they evaluate to see whether the patient or the client has really been uh, smoothly treated. The tensions from the body are over and therefore there's no pain in the person. Reassessment of the energy field to observe if rebalance has occurred. So all what they do is to rebalance the tensions in the body so that the tension will not go and accumulate certain part of the body to cause pain. So as they are healing the person, they are rebalancing the tensions in the body to make sure that uh, the body heals itself or heals itself once the tensions are balanced. 
clinical application. How do we apply this clinically? Reducing anxiety in hospitalized clients with cardiovascular diseases, increasing levels of homeopathy. So those with anxiety best treated with therapeutic touch. And people with cardiovascular disease, because thinking, anxiety, depression, stress can all release catecholamines, the sympathetic hormones. And this can cause vessel constriction, increasing peripheral resistance, thereby raising the blood pressure. So once they relax the mind, there's vessel dilatation and the pressure comes down. So it is best treated with anxiety and cardiovascular diseases. Levels of hemoglobin, when you have hemoglobins are imbalanced, anemia, it can balance it. Reducing headaches and improving mood in bereaved adults. Those who are bereaved and with full of depression and anxiety, it is best treated with therapeutic touch. Facilitate inhaling of traumatic injuries such as sprains, fractures, bends, and wounds. Because these areas have experienced some kind of imbalance and tensions, and therefore they can help reduce the ailments there. Managing such suicidal tendencies. Somebody can go into suicide because of probably uh, depression or something, or what he's going through. And once they get that person, they can rebalance and then redirect the energies. And the ten the one the anxiety is over, when the depression is over, the suicidal tendencies are over. Reducing chemotherapy-related nausea and vomiting. Some, the side effects of chemotherapy can also be handled well because of the stimulating on the vomiting center in the brain. They can reduce that by relaxing the brain and therefore reducing the stimulations on the vomiting center in the brain. So it can best be treated uh, with therapeutic touch. Facilitating recovery from incest and abuse. Incest, incest and abuse. So those who are abused, raped, and other things, I think psychologically they can relax them and make them feel fine. Limitations of therapeutic touch, lack of response, which includes an abuse of eye and facial contact during the therapeutic sessions and too brief of a session. So sometimes because they are too close to you, uh, it's something, they see eyeball to eyeball and if you have a very beautiful patient inside in front of you and you are a man, the eyeball to eyeball can, can translate into something else. So that is of a limitation here. Uh, of course, you are a human being and once you are moving your beautiful hand through this person, it can induce something else. So the abuse of eye and facial contact during therapeutic session is too brief of a session. Sometimes people don't want to have eyeball to eyeball with you because once you look at their eyes, you can attract them and that is what they do and you see the muslims will even cover their heads and even their face they don't want to see you for you to attract them that is it but in therapeutic touch you have eyeball to eyeball and the hands are close you can imagine therapeutic touch may be contraindicated in clients who are sensitive to human interaction and touch, example, those who have been physically abused or have psychiatric disorders. That is the example I'm giving here. Clients who are sensitive to energy repatrying may also need to avoid therapeutic touch. These include premature infants, newborn, children, pregnant women, older or debilitated people. There are some people who have problems with touch. Once you touch them, it can induce even convulsions and other things. So you avoid these patients and they don't get problems here. Okay, so that is brief therapeutic touch. We can have another session here uh, before, but uh, before we do our last, uh, our last lecture, or before we do our last presentation for today, uh, I thank the Takrade <laughs> Center so much. In fact, they, they, they came to rescue <laughs> when they, when they send something to me as a way of um, as a way of uh, helping me out in a case in my house. So the Takrade Center, I'm so grateful to you for your kind gesture. In fact, it has come a long way to help me so I can have a lecture today. God will literally bless you. I'm really grateful, Takrade Center. God bless you so much. Thank you, sir. Yes.
Ah, uh, okay. We have our last lecture here, which is flotation therapy. Flotation therapy. Flotation. Okay, so. Hello. Okay, so we have flotation therapy. Uh, for today, we can manage and finish this. We pray the network helps us. We have just a few minutes to finish, but we can do that. So, uh, flotation, uh, you have been working around the clock, nurses and midwives, working around the clock throughout the year. So much stressful. Take some time, go hide something, and go through flotation therapy. What is flotation therapy? So flotation therapy is a luxurious way to suit and heal the body from the constant stress of life's daily pressure. You can leave the noise and confusion behind and perhaps for the first time in your life, experience total relaxation and deep healing in your private peaceful space. After all, what are we getting the money to? If you get the whole world, into your hands and you die today, you can't go with it. You have to value life, appreciate life once you are alive. Have some time to rest. Distress yourself. Stop become so much stressful. Stress can kill. Let us go to a private place, a peaceful place and have a total realization and deep healing in our minds and bodies and the body will be rejuvenated. When the body is rejuvenated, we can have our energies back. I told you, I was in Kolebu some two, three weeks ago, and the clinician I work with for licensing enzymes, the person looked at their face. She looked so worn out. And I said, she's at the medical ward one, those who know Kolebu, the renal ward. And she's worn out. I said, hey, Juliet, why? You look so worn out. The stress is too much. Please, you are too young to face this stress. Why? You are holding Kolebu to your chest. You will die and leave them. Let us, let us redo the stress. The clinicians, I'm advising you. The stress is too much. The, you see a clinician and the face is drawn with stress. You are worn out. But the administrators and the medical soups are chopping the monies. What do you do? Please, take your leave. Go home and rest. We and your children or even yourself, you can go to some quiet place. Have your rest. Rejuvenate the body. If you die today, they replace you. Even when they have not buried you, they replace you. Let us think about our health. Our health. How many nurses? The whole year, take time to go through medical examination by going through laboratory investigation from head to toe. How many of you? Raise up your hand and let me see. Meanwhile, you are exposed to a wide range of infections every now and then. Wide range of infections. You are inhaling some. You are touching some. Blood is spilling on you. My God. Let us take time to heal ourselves. Do medical examination. Check your laps, your heart, your liver, your kidney. If you die today, without burying you, they will replace you. A therapeutic session in a flotation tank typically lasts an hour, so you don't go beyond one hour. For the first 40 minutes, it is reportedly possible to experience itching in various parts of the body. So for the first 40 minutes, the body will start reacting. So you start feeling some kind of itching. It is the body's response to the therapy. A phenomenon also reported to be coming during, to be common during the early stage of meditation. So once you are going through meditation, the mind is trying to control the body. So definitely the body will react by giving you some kind of itching. The last 20 minutes often ends with a transition. So we have the first 40 minutes 
and then the last 20 minutes. The first 40 minutes for the body reaction, itching and those and those and so on and so forth. Now for the last 20 minutes is for transition from beta or alpha brain waves to theta, which typically occurs briefly before sleep and again at waking. When you are about to sleep, the brain waves move from alpha or beta to theta. That is where you go to a deep sleep. Yes, of course, yeah, you, you, can, you can answer the question when we are done. I'll give you some time, to, uh, otherwise we may not get anywhere. So let me move through and I'll give you time to answer or to, to ask your questions. So when you're about to sleep, the brain waves move from beta or alpha and then go to theta. Typically occurs when you are about to wake up or you are about to sleep. In a flotation tank, the theta state can last independ uh, indefinitely without subject losing consciousness. So you can you can go into the theater, but you may not be unconscious. You'll be conscious, all right, but the tank will take you through indefinitely at the theater stage. Many use the extended theater state as a tool. So some people, when they are in the state of theater, they use it to do so many things. They use it as a tool for enhanced creativity. Like once I listened to Apostle Kojo Safo, the Kantanka, he said he goes to deep sleep and when he sleeps and dreams, he gets creativity and comes out with creativity. That is how he's able to bring a lot of things out. He's in a state of theta and that state of theta is an enhanced creativity and problem solving. If you are solving problems, you can't get solutions to go into the state of theta. After coming out, you see that the brain is refreshed and you can have answers to or solutions to your problems. Or for super learning, if you want to learn superiorly, if you want to have superior learning, go into theta state. When the brain is overwhelmed with activities, stress, you can't learn anything. Relax the mind, relax the brain, and you see you can have good learning. The more often the tank is used, the longer the theta period becomes. So if you go through the tank more often, the more you enjoy the theta state, a state of realization and deep sleep, but you don't lose consciousness. Spas sometimes provide commercial float tanks. So there are people who use these tanks for commercial uh, businesses. Float tanks for use in realization. Flotation therapy has been academically studied in the US and in Sweden with published results showing reduction in both pain and stress. Those with pain and stress is very, very useful for them. The relaxed state also involves lowering or lowered blood pressure and maximum blood flow. Once you are relaxed, we know physiologically, if you are relaxed, the stress is low, the catecholamines are less released, it has less effect on the blood vessels, and therefore, there's no sympathetic flow, the blood vessels remain relaxed, they open up, and the lumen is opened, blood flow without any stress, the pressure on the heart is reduced. So, they relax you stress-free, and the BP drops drastically. Headache is over. Flotation can be passive or active. Depending on the purpose for realization, one simply floats and clears the mind. So once you are floating, you clear the mind. Active floating has many different techniques. One may per perform meditation. So during floats, you can do meditation. You can do mantras and self-hypnosis. Utilize educational programs. The idea of active floating is that when the body is relaxed, the mind becomes highly suggestible and any, any action taken during these days will enter the information into the subconsciousness. Flotation therapy may be used to complement other body works and healing methods. Flotation therapy is, flotation is a therapy that is undertaken by floating in warm salt in a float tank. So you have a tank with warm salt and it keeps you afloat. Warm salt keeps you afloat. Flotation therapy developed from the research work of John Lilly, although he was not primarily interested in the therapy, rather in the effect of sensory deprivation of the human brain and mind. So it was first uh, you know, uh, uh, brought in by John Lilly. He first uh, brought it up, but he was less interested until he saw the need that works through the mind and then the brain. 
Okay, people using flute, early flute tanks discovered that they enjoyed the experience and that the relaxed state was also a healing state for many conditions, including stress. So when the body and the mind is relaxed, there's less stress, anxiety is less, pain goes away, swelling goes away, insomnia is over, you can sleep and sleep well, and you have less effect of jet lag. I hope you know jet lag. It's an effect when you sit in the flight for a longer period. For example, you move from Ghana to Asia or Dubai, stay in the flight for almost 12 hours. And when you get out, if the flight is nonstop, you get down and it's like you are having some jet lags. You are having some pain around the, the, the low arms called jet lags. So that is what you feel after a long flight. So here we have effects of flotation. So stress relief, realization, you have scientific research, you can go through flotation and you have good results. Athletic performance and sports and rehabilitation, it is very useful for them. Beauty, it can relax the face. You see the person and the, 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 the person faces like he's, she, she's worn out, but after a beautiful flotation, you see that your face is relaxed because you have good hormones. Business, Benefits, you can do good business with good mental abilities. Creativity, you come up to something new. Emotional and depression goes away. You have good emotions. Then we have enhanced learning. You can learn good super learning with rotation. Pain relief, the headache is over. Pregnancy, the hormones are good and you can be very fertile during flotation. Once you come up flotation, the least sex, you are fertile, you are pregnant self-motivation and weight loss is very good uh that is so that is how uh you can use flotation the person is coming out of the flotation tank see her she's just coming out and deprive yourself of stress and pain so she's over as a result of float tanks so as a result float tanks were produced for commercial uses and commercial float centers offering flotation therapy open in several countries during the period of 1980s to the present day when there are hundreds of flotation centers in dozens of countries. So we have them all over the country. In Ghana, I'm here to see one here. I'm here to see one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may be here, but how will people know? You have to advertise on it and tell people to come and patronize. Otherwise, we may not be aware. In almost all cases, these float centers offer wellness treatment and in particular, the release of stress. That is the most beautiful aspect of it. Wellness treatment centers and stress realization or stress relieving. Research into flotation therapy as opposed to just the effect of uh, isolation began in the US at Ohio State University where flotation was shown to improve creativity in jazz musicians. So those who play jazz, yeah, they add flotation to it. So once you are in the flotation tank, the jazz music is moving on. You are listening to the jazz. Accuracy in rifle shooting. So rifle shooting. Yeah. So so who want to shoot and shoot well? You can go through flotation. Once you come out, let the person stretch the hand. You blow it off. Focus before academic examination and stress relief, among others. So before serious academic work, you go to the flotation tank and you come out with realization of the mind then you can do wonders in the exam examination so you can go to the flotation time before the end of semester exams so you experience flotation these people are floating so look at they are in the flotation uh, uh therapy so they have they are being afloat and the water is made of hot warm salt warm salt and that will keep them afloat so research in Sweden has demonstrated the therapeutic effect on stress and pain. The technique takes advantage of an innate natural inclination to relax when floating at a comfortable temperature. The temperature is that which allows natural heat generation to escape without the need for muscle action to raise body temperature in homeostasis. The flotation posture is really the spine pos position, although the prone position with chain supported on elbows is recommended for pregnant women allows all the postural muscles to relax so with a different position that you can assume the water is kept at a specific temperature to give you the maximum effect and therefore you maintain homeostasis 
after you have come out or during the flotation therapy. There is homeostasis, balance of the internal environment, despite changes in our outside environment. So the water pressure on the immersed skin is lower than the blood pressure. So they measure the pressure within the water, which is lower than the blood pressure. And that blood flow continues in the skin capillaries. This is in contrast to normal bed rest, where local con contact pressure inhibits blood flow, requiring regular adjustment of posture. So once you are in a flotation water, the, 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 the water enters the body. I mean, there's movement of uh, this water to and fro. So nothing is preventing the movement of blood from moving from one part to the other part. Unlike when you are on bed, when you sleep at one part, uh, you wake up and that part is paining you because there's lack of blood flow. In the flotation, every part receives blood supply, heavily blood supply to all parts of the body. That is the advantage. When people cannot adjust their posture in bed, for example, in some illness, bed sore can result. Of course, we know that. When floating, there is no tendency to adjust posture and a person can float immobile for many hours. So in flotation, you achieve maximum effect, no bed sores, blood flows all part. Every part is subjected to the effect of the water and you have total body effect. Okay, so uh, let's see some of the effects. So this person is in a flotation therapy. She is mentally relaxed from the head to the toe. Every part of the body is totally relaxed. So uh, the natural tendency of the body in the flotation posture at the correct temperature is to dilate the blood vessel. So all what we want to do is to make sure that the blood vessels are dilated and therefore blood flows through all parts of the body. Reducing the blood pressure, maximizing blood flow, the brain activity normally associated with postural muscle is reduced to a minimum. In this state, which we can call the floating state, natural endorphins are released, reducing the pain. So that is the scientific idea here. Once you are in a natural state of the mind, the body releases a hormone called endorphins, natural endorphins, which is used to block the pain signals. I hope you know pharmacology. You have all done pharmacology. So the natural endorphins are released and these endorphins are used to block the pain signal. So you don't get any pain all over the body. So citation needed. So lactic acid removal is also accelerated. You know, one of the cause of pain in the muscle is accumulation of lactic acid. And example, in the muscle pool, there's accumulation of lactic acid. So once you go through the flotation, lactic acid is also removed and therefore the pain goes away. Flow in the lymphatic system is increased. One of the pain is lymphatic blockage. So there are lymphatic blockage, there's also pain. And once in the flotation tank, blood vessels are, are dilated, lymphatic vessels are increasing in their flow. The first under stress is, is, I mean, it's superb, it's superb. Okay, so uh, let's go through them. The effect of the salts, just go through them, just go through them and you'll be fine. Okay, so so these are the tanks. These are the flotation tanks. Examples of this, this person is in it. They can close it and have a dark experience. So say flotation in darkness allow areas of the brain which are always in use when awake to be liberated from their work. Tests have shown that there is a deep, a drop, sorry, a drop in the electrical activity of the brain and you begin to generate theta brain waves, which are associated with deep realization. The darkness during flotation also induces a balance between the left and the right brain. Uh, you are going to achieve maximum effect of the flotation tank. So let me ask, or if you have questions to ask, let me let me just listen to your questions. I will send you, I think these all these slides have been sent to you already. And you can read around them. Yes. Any questions so far? So we can use the last minute for questioning. It will feel nice. That is from Gloria Manco. I say this will feel nice. Gloria, have time to 
enjoy flotation. Charity comes in. Wow, I wish to experience it. Charity is good to experience one. Uh, after getting all the money, what are you going to do with it? Yes. Salifu, swimming pool is the answer in Ghana. No, Salifu, swimming pool is not the same as flotation tank. The water pressure, the salts, everything, the temperature, everything is different. So you cannot equate swimming pool to flotation tank. It's not the same. We can't kill ourselves. Immediately you die. Instantly someone will replace you. Of course, that is coming from... Um, that, yes, that is coming from Samuel Kofi. Odum. Yes, Samuel, you can't kill yourself. Once you die today, somebody will replace you. I just inhale some right now. Oh, oh somebody said he just inhaled some kind of... I have some new routine. New routine, you inhale some new scent right now. God will have favor on you. Don't worry. Hmm, I yes, very sad. Money palava. Okay, so these are all comments from you. All right. So any question from the class? Uh, tomorrow from four to six, you have your mid -sem. And I wish you the best in your mid -sem examination. I'll quickly look at the results and get back to you once you are done. Yes. And... Yeah, please. This Which particular slice and the therapeutic test slice we are not having yeah, them please. okay then immediately i finish i will send you this particular slide and then the therapeutic touch i will send it to you right yeah, away please. which area yes the, oh, so this particular for, slide, I'll send it. you see there yeah, please hello i was asking that areas or the made them for if i may ask please uh, <laughs> uh i don't know but um I can't I can't remember anything right now, to be frank. Uh the questions were set some time ago and I don't know what is there. <laughs> so uh you you just handle the slice and then the study guide. It will be over. It will be okay. Yes. Sir. It will be okay. Yes. Sir, please, from the explanation you are giving to us on the therapeutic touching, that means you see, um, you see, when we are on the ward, we say, "Oh, you give patient therapeutic touch um, to yeah, yeah, uh, during yeah. our nursing." Yes, but from what you are saying right now, from the therapeutic touch we are studying right now, that means it's different from what we've been doing on the ward and then labeling it as therapeutic touch because no, this they, one is they, used with they, racial, they, racial, racial energies. Yes, but you the see, one we've they, been doing to comfort our patients is quite different. Yes, yes, we have we have targeted as therapeutic because we think that when we touch them, it may bring some sort of healing. Okay, so that is the next point of therapeutic touch. But we have the normal therapeutic touch as a form of complementary and alternative therapy or medicine, where we have a special hands with special energies. So the nurse is assuming the nurse is coming out with a special healing in the hands of the person, of the nurse. And when the, the nurse touches you, the nurse touches you by stimulating the energy to flow into the sick person, for the sick person to heal him, him or herself, psychologically and physically, heal the person. So that is from the nurse's point of view, when you turn as therapeutic touch. But we have calm, a calm that has its own therapeutic way of healing people with a special energy in their hands. Yes. Sir. Sir, how different okay, is okay. Sir. Yes. How, how different is the therapy type the massage? Massage therapy. Oh, yes. Uh, for oh, for massage, for massage, in fact, massage is there. I sent you the massage slide. They are different. For massage, you 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 really touch the person's skin. <laughs> Uh, with some kind of force and you are trying to redirect the blood flow to the person's area and relieve tight muscles. So here it is rather going to have a very contact touch. But the therapeutic touch, you don't really touch the person. You leave some space and um, some energy flows there. But in massage, you will physically touch the person and inflict some kind of pressure on that part of the body. 
and that is how different it is. It is because of the closeness of the hands and how in massage your hand is really in contact with the person's skin. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, all right. So any question? Any question? Okay. Yes, please, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Please, mine is a spirituality. Okay. If you ask about the uh, essential dimensions and spiritual, I don't, I don't get that part. No, that is not here. We have learned that slide over. It's not. I don't know whether you joined the lecture. It is. It is. I, it was taught. Yes. It was taught. So you have to go there and read the slides. It is different from this slide. It's not even part of the therapeutic, uh, the, the the complementary therapy. That one was done in spirituality. So you read the slides there, the answers are there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yes. So uh, Adiza, hand is out, up and up here, your hand is up. Of course, you have Benis, your hand is up. Let's hear you. John, your hand is up. Benis, your hand is up. Yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah, um, please. Um, as far as nurses, we are concerned of um, ensuring and fulfilling the needs of our clients. That's the psychological, the physical need, and the physiological, the emotional need. Um, will it be of need when a client um, asks of a sexual need? Sexual need? Maybe, yeah. From you? Uh, I, I, one of my colleagues experienced that. No, you told the person the, the, the ethics of the profession will not allow that. And therefore, he can choose somebody outside your profession. Because you cannot, it's, it's contrary to your ethics. So you can't do that. You can psych oh, the okay. person up. There are mental problems that can do, mental, that can do that, mental patients can do that. But you don't, you don't go and, and, then, and, then, and then involve yourself with it because you are a professional person. So psych the mm -hmm. person up and then, and then, and then, and then counsel the person well. Okay, to get a life, a lifelong partner, right? Okay. Yes. But what my colleague did was, um, he sent the the client home after the charge. They communicated, and and the client came home, and it it went on. Oh. I record, I record. Why are you there? Why are you there? Do you have evidence? What are you okay. saying? So, uh, Martin. Yeah, so 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 yes. Okay, ah, okay. Martin, so I think I think we have come to the end of the lecture. Sir, please no. <laughs> Sir, please, good morning. Good morning. Please, I hope all is well. Yes. We thank God. Sir, please, we're saying something concerning the Takwade students, but one of our students were disturbing, so some of us couldn't hear you out clearly. Yes, I said that. Uh, uh, when the rabbits entered my house and took everything, at least, uh, I was thanking the Takrade Center because they are all here for oh, some kind know? gesture. The kind gesture they, they, they did to me, at least, to be able to gather some items for teaching. Uh, they sent me some things when I was thanking them for what they did. I was really appreciated. Uh, oh, so I was really, really sorry uh, about uh, that. Uh, grateful to them. So, so, so thank, thank all of them. I thank you all. Uh, those who have remembered us in prayers. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt. I have girls in my house. Nobody was hurt. They entered nice. my bedroom. I was asleep. My wife was asleep. Nobody was hurt, and they took whatever they wanted to. to uh, they wanted to take. So. Uh, I thank them so much, and I thank all of you so much. God bless all of you. Yes. Oh, so sorry. We didn't know. We are not, yeah. we are not getting to know. Yes, yes. Oh, so sorry. 
that's fine. Amen. 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 I thank God for our lives. We are we still have life. We have everything. Yeah. Say. Yes. Last question. Okay. Please. For the slide you sent to us last week. Yeah. Uh, physiotherapy and massage. Is physiotherapy part of massage? During physiotherapy, massage is a component of physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is a wide range of remedies. During physio, they do a whole lot of things. Heat therapy is there. Electrical therapy is there. They have a whole lot of treatment going through physiotherapy. A whole lot. Which massage is a component of them? You understand? No one is calling. Yes, physio, they use a whole lot of machines and other things. But the component of which you, one of them is massage, massage therapy. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Because by the by the definition of physiotherapy, is it seems like it's form part of massage. So a little bit confused. It is, it is, it is, it's the, it is the domain within which massage falls under. Okay. Yes. Who to you also that? have heat, heat application. Heat application is a form of physiotherapy. It's a part of physiotherapy. They do heat application and the patient can get relief okay. of their pains. Oh, okay. All right. So any question again? Any question? I'll 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 send you the slice right away, the two slides. Therapeutic touch and uh, uh, I wanted to teach acupuncture in addition, but I sent you acupuncture, so please read acupuncture and uh, the two slides I'm going to send you right now. Say, please. Say. Okay. Yes. Say, please. Last two weeks, what we discussed, I mean, the introduction to the camp. We are not having that slice, please. Can you please okay. add it for us? Okay, okay, all right. I will send it to you. Please, thank all you right. very much. Okay, yeah. bye. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, on this sir, note, sir, yes, yes. Please, me some, how many questions? There are a lot of questions, but I think everybody is doing at least 30 questions. 30, oh, 30 okay. questions. Okay. Yes, yes. So, so we are okay. really sorry for, for what happens to you. Oh, thank you. We are, we, are, we are really sorry. Thank you, sorry, thank sorry. You, thank you. We thank God we yes. are alive. Yes. Thank God we are alive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your time and everything. I wish you all the best for your medicine tomorrow, God's willing. And may the good Lord help and protect all of us. We meet next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Bye.